I tell you people on the radio about how I watch Box Nation, how I love the fights from England. But I got to tell you, Frank Warren, those 17-hour cards are way too long. Well, we try and please the fans, you know, the insomniac boxing fans. They're the ones we're reaching out for. Uh, no, we've got, we got to give our guys fights, and we try to... I mean, sometimes they are long cards, but we're in the business of giving, you know, building our fighters and bringing them to the biggest audience possible. Got a question for Frank Warren now. The United States is being criticized because of promoting Russian fighters and fighters from, from abroad. Now, when England had their fighter issues, they sort of built from within, and they spent money. They went, they spent, they got a bonus from Argentina and Mexico and things like that, and they built their own product, their homegrown product. Is, the Amer is America missing the boat there? I think what it is, I think it's the way, what happens with a British boxer, if he comes, say, from London or Manchester, you will build him up in London or Manchester, so he's building up a big following, like Ricky Hatton did in, in Manchester. Eventually, when he came to the state, for example, when he called Floyd Mayweather, you know, 25,000 people come over to see him. Frank Bruno, it was the same. Whereas, I think, what happens with the American boxers, a lot of promoters, not like, not the Bob Aram as this well, because you know Bob certainly gets gets it. But I think a lot of the other guys just go for the full rule deals, so they're not building up and following a local fan base, and that's why I think with the, with the Russian guys, to be quite honest, all the all the quality fighters seem to be coming now from the East. You know, since the demise of the Soviet Union, you know, all the different uh, ex-satellite states are now countries in their own right. And the fighters come through. If you go back to the Olympic Games and think Soviet Union sent one representative, since the, since that the, the demise of that, all these different countries like Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and so forth, are bringing their fighters through. So now you're seeing all these Eastern Bloc fighters emerging. They're hungry. They want to fight. They got big hearts, and you know they seem to be where it's at at the moment. Well, you've had a Hall of Fame career, Frank Warren's I guess. You've had a Hall of Fame career. What stands out? I mean, if there was one thing you say, if you were laid down in bed tonight, what would stand out in the career of Frank Warren? Well, that's a hard one. Um, I don't ask these questions. Uh, I think, probably, I've been involved in some good British fighters. Like, you know, Nassim Hamid was a great fighter, a talent that never went as far as he should have done because of the, the family getting involved and the fact that he, you know, he stopped training the way he should have. At one stage, he, he could have been one of the greatest British fighters. Um, just stop doing it. Joe Kawasaki, um, I think in my time, has probably been the, the best British fighter to emerge. You know, the WBO are honouring tonight. Um, great, he had some great fights. You know, fighting Bernard Hopkins over here was a, I thought, I thought he well won that fight. I know people said it close. That was a great moment. It was in my friend's casino, uh, uh, Planet Hollywood, with Robert Earl. Brilliant night. But for me, his best fight was against Michelle Kessler, Mike Mikel Kessler, when Kessler was a good fighter when he was coming in as a winning fighter undefeated and that night in Cardiff we had 54,000 people there 54,000 people the atmosphere is fabulous and Joe Kawasaki to me proved that night what a you know what a he deserves to be there amongst the elite okay, I'm going I'm to be a little non-serious to have a little fun okay you weren't thinking about like changing changing your lifestyle like getting a uh, sex change or anything like that this isn't a rave amongst pretty promoted I haven't got a booze for it Frank Warren, all the best. the most, but... <laughs> hey, how... Box Nation, why can't, why can't Box Nation be sold here in the United States? Well, I think it, we're trying to syndicate it. Well, it really happens. I mean, Box Nation in the UK, obviously, we buy fights from all around, all around the world. But say, for example, you know, Golden Boy and Top Rank, they will deal with HBO, they've got to deal with their Showtime and various other American broadcasters. So we couldn't do that deal here because HBO and Showtime have the rights to those fights. What we could do is do a box nation where we bring all the fights in from around the world, excluding the, the, the states, and if we do a deal with a local promoter, then the local promoter puts his own shows on box nation. We are franchising it. We're about, in the new year, going to announce three new countries that we're going into, which are Eastern Bloc countries, former Eastern Bloc countries. So we're doing that. So it's going to be quite interesting times. But Box Nation is the only dedicated boxing channel in the world. It's been brilliant, it's been tough. Launched it in the worst possible economic climate. It nearly sent me bust. Ran up paying people late. It was tough from that, but we paid everybody and we got the thing going and it's you know it's been 
If you're a boxing fan, you're in boxing heaven watching boxing nation. I don't want to say that I do anything illegally like watching these fights on the yeah, internet. Or you do. Like that. Put me in the name of the I'll tell you, but if I could, I would watch these fights because they're like 17 bout cars. And I mean, they're truly entertaining. You got young guys, you're building from within, homegrown talent. Why can't the U.S., I'll say it again, why can't the U.S. develop their own talent? I think, uh, uh, you know, when you look back at the Olympic Games, you go back again. I think you have to look at the grassroots level. So you look at the amateur scene, you know, go back to, what is this, 90, Tyrone, Tyrone uh, Biggs was the last time the, was the, last time the Amer Americans won a gold, a heavyweight gold medal. And that's a long time ago. Yeah. And, and since then, it's been, it's gone to the, it's gone to the East. It's gone to the UK with Lennox Lewis, if you want to call Lennox a British fighter. You know, it's, it, it's gone to the Klitschko's. Um, and America's just not come through. You've got a couple of exciting talents at the moment which need to be tested, like Deontay Wilder. You know, we see he's the real deal with somebody. Here's him on the whiskers. But if you, there's, there's not a lot of big guys around. And you look at, you look at the culture of Amer American boxing, which they were very successful, like the Cubans, the East Germans at the time, coming through, delivering some quality fighters, a generation of Oscar De La Hoyas, the Pernod Whitakers, don't do that anymore. How many, how many gold medals do they win, win now at the Olympics? Was it 92? They have one, I think. Yeah, two. Yeah, so, so that tells you the grassroots level, it just doesn't seem to work. One last question for you, I'll tell you what. Do you know why fighters from the Ukraine are so tough? You're going to tell me. Because they got to wipe their ass with a rock. If you walk over every day, wipe me ass with a rock, he fight you out of there, wouldn't you, Frank? I can think of a few rocks. Uh, <laughs> Frank, I'll, 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 I'll,